Hi everyone, welcome to our new online program of Art for the Heart. I am your hostess, Janelle, and if you recognize me, you are correct, I am also from Skills to Pay the Bills. So if you haven't checked that video out yet, go check it out. So that video deals with how to do budgeting, how to meal plan, and how to prep for a new job. That's gonna be a new thing coming out as well, so check that out if you haven't. In this series, we are going to cover topics about art. So here we are going to find ways to hopefully relax your heart and mind during the pandemic. So hopefully as you're with us and working through these projects that we make COVID seem like less of a drag. So before we get started, I'm just going to explain what the process is a little bit like. This program means that you need to register for it online. And then when that happens, you get a little kit with supplies in there that you will need for this project and a little flyer that explains what to do if you somehow lost track in the video and that sort of thing. So before I get started, I want you guys to tell me when was the last time that you laughed really hard and what happened? So I would love to hear stories of that. So what you can do is take a picture of your completed mask project and then in your little caption, tell us what was that funny story? Tag us on your Instagram page at Family Futures Resource Network. All right, let's move on to our project. So these are the supplies you'll need for this project. You'll need a plastic spoon, wooden skewer, a toothpick, a handy dandy safety knife if you're not using all of your modeling clay, a paintbrush, a really cheap set of modeling clay. This is just from the dollar store. Some newspaper and a bowl of water just uh, as a dipping source so that you can have your water nearby as you mold your clay since it is a water-based clay. So this will start out being quite moldable and, um, and then it'll dry and harden to be white, which we will paint next week. And Jess will join us for the painting next week. And let's get started. So I've just cut out the pieces that I needed since I will not be using an entire package of it just for the interest of time. So what I'm going to do before anything else is I think I'm gonna just crush up some newspaper. We're gonna put this underneath our mask and then you keep your shape of your mask. So first of all, we're gonna go over some techniques just to help, you know, gauge what our masks are gonna look like and the component parts, I guess, in order to be able to create one of our masks. So this is just a slab. So you're creating a flat surface to work on and you want it to be smooth and about the same size. So that's it. That's your first technique, just a slab, all right? So now, let's see here, let's talk about coils. So coils, very simple, like you would have learned if you were in an um, art class when you were younger or something like that. Coils are very simple. You just roll the clay between your hands to get it to the thickness that you want, like so. And then if you want to, you can coil it in, like so. Get yourself some nice little coils there. It's just a simple coil. So coils are really great as a Base, if you notice, for a lot of different parts of the face. The eyebrows use coils, uh, the hair also uses coils, so we'll go into that a little bit more later. So another one that you can do is add skewer details. So on my slab, I can use my skewer, if I want to, to draw out, say, a full, long line. And again, this is just to show you guys what I can do with the supplies that are in your kits. And if you want a little bit more control, I usually use a toothpick. And I will just, you know, add in some details in there if I wanted to. So toothpicks are really great for adding those really specific details across the face. But this is just as an example again. So that's what you could do with a toothpick or a skewer. The other one you can do is blending. So blending means you're layering another piece on top of your base. So layering is really great to add nuance and to add definition. So if you can see, this, these masks look a lot more 3D. And you have um, some pretty nice seams, like you could say. So if I wanted my coil to seam right onto my slab, I can dip my brush in water and actually smooth those surfaces down and create a really great seam so that it just looks more crisp and clean. So this just helps blend the parts together 
And obviously it definitely sticks better too, especially if, you're really heavy, if you have really heavy pieces on there. Next, we'll use the plastic spoon. So the plastic spoon can be used in a couple different ways. Plastic spoon can be used to create indentations in your slab. So you get depth and roundedness in your creation. So my slab is a little thin, but you get what I mean. So you can use it to create depth like that, or you can use it to scoop out. Again, be very gentle when you're scooping out because you don't want to rip or tear your clay. But if you do rip or tear your clay, you can always bend it back with a little bit of water. So just as an example, say I ripped and tore my clay further than I wanted it to. You're always welcome to seal it back with water. This is really great medium because it is so easy to work with in that sense. You can seal up your mistake and try again. So those are some of our techniques that we'll be using to create our masks. So now I'm gonna go on to explain how we would make each part of our mask. So I've just prepared my clay again so I can start on the project. As you can see, I this is my face. You can't see my face now, but that is what I have made. And at the time I had waves, so that's why I made coils for my hair. And this is Jess's face. So we'll use both as a reference to create our new masks. So for this project, I want you guys to think about the face you normally show to the world. So as you're sculpting, refer to that face. So you could even refer to a specific emotion that you usually express to others. And one way you can do this is to have a mirror in front of you and you can look off of the mirror to you know, get your face shapes and whatnot. Or you could take a selfie and have your phone next to you and use that image to refer to to get your face. Uh, yeah, so it's up to you. So as you're creating your clay mask, I want you guys to think about how does the mask represent you? Does the mask you created hinder or protect you? And does this mask only show up in certain situations? So those are just some things to think about as you guys are creating this. And again, if you forgot what I've asked you, if you refer back to your flyer that are in your art kits, that's a really great place to refer to. So, showing you guys how to make the face shape, the basic face shape. So you start off with a slab as we did, right? And I usually like to smooth it out since, you know, I don't want my face to look like it has a little bit of a fingerprints all over it. So I usually start off like this, smooth it all out with a little bit of water. You have a little bit more of a smooth base and really try to get it the same thickness, all right? So now this, after I've gotten this as smooth as I want, this is where you can use your skewer or your toothpick and you can cut out your face shape. So you want to save a little bit of the clay to add in your extra details, right? Otherwise you will have no extra clay to work with. And like I said, I only used half of the package, but you can use the whole package. All right, so like so. Say I have my, my you know, basic face shape. And you can always use water to smooth out the edges again so it doesn't look like you have, a, you know, jagged edges to your <laughs> head or face. Like so, just to show you guys the shape. And this is where the newspaper comes in handy. So your newspaper will be used as kind of like a mount. So bring that newspaper back. You're going to mount your face shape on that newspaper so you can work off of it and you can manipulate your f mask using the newspaper behind it so you're not directly touching it and potentially changing the shapes or the, the divots on your face mask, that sort of thing. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to explain how to make each part of the mask. I'm not gonna make a whole new mask because we can refer to it right there. So this is just the face shape. So what I can do, I'm gonna move the face over. How to make each part. Let us start with, actually I'm going to show you how to make the eye sockets first because that's really quick and easy. So using your spoon, you're going to make a quick little divot on your mask. So that was a very bad divot. Uh, maybe a little bit of water underneath. And there we go, you get a nice smooth socket there. So sometimes what helps too is to draw out where you want your eyes and your mouth to be. And you can always, you know, seal the creases after. So you can draw, I am using my toothpick here, you can draw like a little cross section that you would do as if you were drawing 
um, like so. So I want my lips there, my eyes will be there, my forehead there, and my nose somewhere in the middle there. So that sort of idea as well. So you can use your spoon to create eye sockets and you can draw out lines on your face to measure out where you want your eyes, nose, and mouth and your forehead to be. So if you have a really big forehead, I actually do have a wide forehead, so I could have brought my line down a little bit more. So those are just some parts. So we have the face, measuring out the face, we have the eye sockets. I'm gonna show you guys how to make the nose, because the nose is really fun to make. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just grab a little bit of water, just so that it's nice and malleable. And if you notice, depending on what type of nose you have, so Jess has a really long nose and I have a smaller nose, so you can make that. And I, I would start off with a shape like so. So a little bit of a triangle I would go with. And then I, what I usually do is I fold it so that I get this crease right here. So I guess I'm trying to make Jess's nose right now because I have a lot more clay on here. So yeah, the nose is a really great place to add a lot of personality and character and really get that uniqueness, right? So I create my shape with my nose, having started off with a little triangle. I fold it down. And then what I wanna do for the sides of the nose is make little circles. So try to get them to match if you want matching nostrils. And I'm just going to attach them. So I'm gonna get a little bit of water. I just dipped the whole ball in, so you can do it my way, or you can also paint them on. If you remember, you can blend it with your paintbrush and blend the noses down. Then what you can do, since your nose, well, your nostrils, I mean to say, has holes in them, depending on the size of the tip of your paintbrush, you can use the tip of your paintbrush to create the little hole, or your toothpick and just be very gentle with this part. Because if you notice, mine and Jessica's noses have a little bit of holes around the bottom. All right, so like that. So that's the nose. So another thing we can create, we're done the nose. Let us work on the lips. So the lips, again, are quite simple. We're using a typical coil. And depending how thick your lips are, you know, just really look. Which, which part of your lips have that thickness, your top lips, your bottom lips, that sort of thing. Um, again, that's another really great place to get a lot of personality and really capture what your face looks like. So I'm just doing a basic coil. Now in general, your lips are thicker in the middle and go thin at the end. Notice, so that's, I'm gonna make that be my bottom lip. And then my top lip, I'm gonna make a little bit thicker since I do have a thicker top lip. And we'll just go a little bit like that. And if you notice, you have a line between your nose and your top lip, and that's called your philtrum. If you notice on here, there's a little bit of a line. So you can use your toothpick to draw out that line that connects your nose to your lips. And usually, because of that, you have a little bit of a divot at the top of your lip so that you have a little bit of a triangle shape. There we go. So you have your lips. So you can have your lips open or closed, depending. You can have your lips go sideways, look sad a little bit, depending on which expression you wanna show on your mask. You can make it look happy. There you go, you have some options for lips. All right, those are lips. Now let us go over eyeballs. So eyeballs are quite simple, yet again, all of the component parts are basically all of the techniques we've learned, and you just add definition to your mask. So you wanna roll balls. Because if you notice, your eyeballs are actually round, right? You have a 3D head, you wanna add 3D shapes to your mask. If you look at these masks, they look rounded out. So I'm gonna cut that in half with my safety knife. It's what I had on hand, so it's what I'm using. And you get little rounded eyes that way. And if you want to get those little irises in there, I usually use the back of my paintbrush and get a little divot going. So this one will add more definition and detail to it. And Jess, next week we'll go over how to paint the, these. All right, so that looks creepy on its own, but let's add some eyelids to them, right? So eyelids, you wanna make a thin slab. You wanna put those 
lids right over the eyes. So I guess it depends how big you want your eyelids to be. So I'm gonna make mine a little bit smaller. So if you notice on mine, they're a little bit thinner, so you can make yours longer, thinner, thicker. Jess's are a little bit thicker. So it's up to you. If you have one eyelid there, you could always use a little bit of water to smooth it out to seam it onto your eye. Oh, so that's one set of eyelids. All right, and on your eyelids, usually you have eyelashes. So what we can do is add in eyelashes to these lids. So this is just quick refer. So you can see Jess had longer and more spread out eyelids. I had shorter but closer together eyelids because that's what my face looked like at the time. So yes, eyelids. You can even do eyelids on the bottom if you want to. All right, I'm gonna show you eyebrows. Because if you've ever seen a face without eyebrows, they look really weird. If you go online and look, <laughs> there's some really weird pictures on there with celebrities. All right, so again, you start off with a coil. And for eyebrows, you wanna make your eyebrows look like sisters, not twins. Unless, of course, your eyebrows are like perfectly even on both uh, sides of your face. That's awesome. Um, in general though, people have a little bit of unevenness and that's what gives people their distinct facial shape and their facial characteristics. So I'm gonna cut it in half. And I have two eyebrows. So on one eyebrows, I just made coils. So we've done these before. And I'm just gonna flatten it a little. Flatten my coils. So another really great place to show off emotion is on the eyebrows. So eyebrow is a really great place that distinguishes if somebody is angry or sad or mad. So, you know, you can change up your eyebrows a little bit. Now you look like you're questioning something. You know, if you go like this, you look a little bit angry. You switch the direction, you look worried. You know, you get the point. These are just some angles you can do. And again, eyebrows have hairs on them, so you can use your toothpick and a definition that way. So if you look on Jessica's and if you look at my mask, we've added eyebrow hairs in there just to add some more definition. All right. Now, finally, this is where you can really go all out. If you notice, there's wrinkles or, you know, little curves here. Jess added specific coils to show off um, some, some wrinkles that happened when she makes this expression. So using the techniques that we've shown you, you can totally use coils or rolls to get those definitions that you want to create your mask. So like I said, for hair, depending on how detailed you want to get, Jess had straight hair, I had wavy hair that day, so you can combine and layer all of those items to create your mask. Thanks so much for following along with this project and we hope to see you next time for when we paint the masks and Jessica will be joining us for that video. And don't forget to tag us in your Instagram and write in a little caption, what is something that's made you laugh really hard? Thanks for tuning in and have a great day.